Alright, welcome everybody to the DCS F4E Phantom for Dummies series. In this chapter, we will be covering how to taxi, take off, and perform a visual landing. Without the aid of a modern HUD, the F4 can be a very technical aircraft to fly and requires quite a bit of finesse to really nail a smooth landing. Thankfully, Heat Blur has done really impressive work on the flight model, so you can squeeze a surprising amount of precision out of an old brick like this. Trust me, the Phantom will take a lot more practice to get a hang of than you're used to in other modules, but I can tell you that greasing your first landing will be a very rewarding experience. So, with all that said, let's get out on the ramp. So after you've started up your Phantom, we need to actually get out on the runway for takeoff. To do this, we need three things. First, the wheel brakes. You can bind these as a single brake or one for each main gear, left and right. I recommend doing this if you have the ability to do so. Next are the actual rudder controls so we can steer. An axis would be best for this, but if you can't, then don't worry, you'll just have to be careful as I'll explain in a moment. And lastly, the nose wheel steering button to actually activate the steering. For reference, the nose wheel steering button on the real Phantom is a pinky button located on the flight stick. I suggest binding it to something that is as easy to press as that if you don't have a pinky button on your HOTAS. Now, in order to actually leave our parking spot after we've started up, we need to open up the Crew Chief menu one last time to find the wheel chocks option and select Remove. Roger. Just wait for the Crew Chief to let you know they're removed. Yes sir, chocks out. And you're all set sir. Have a safe flight and disconnecting. If the spawn is a hot start, then you won't have to worry about this step. To get rolling, we'll need to give the engines a bit of power. Push the throttle up to 80% to get our Phantom moving, then throttle back to about 70% to maintain speed. Once you've started moving, it doesn't take much power to keep rolling. Now, in order to steer, we will have to press and hold the nose wheel steering button to actually enable the ability to turn. Just be careful though, because while it allows you to turn, it also functions like a high steering setting in other jets and you can actually oversteer your jet at higher taxi speeds which will cause a loss of control as your nose drifts and you'll have to let it return to center to use again. This is the main reason I recommend you bind this to an axis if available because hitting the keys for left and right rudder will give you maximum yaw inputs and cause an immediate oversteering of the gear. While rolling, if you need to make finer adjustments to steer, then you can use differential braking to do so if you bound the left and right wheel brakes. Also, once you start taxiing, Jester will prompt you with a question asking if you plan to fly low. Just to double check, are we hitting the deck on this one? And if you answer yes, you will be prompted with options on how low you intend to fly, from 50 feet to 200 feet. This dialogue option is supposed to set Jester's reaction to flying low to be more calm instead of having him panic, or, more importantly, keeping him from ejecting, which has been a running issue for some people in the F-14. I would just always select 50 to be safe. So, now that we know how to steer, let's hurry on out to the runway. Now that we're lined up on the runway, let's do a couple of checks before we actually take off. First, let's set our trim. The F4 needs a lot of nose down trim to perform a smooth takeoff roll. To find the trim meter for the stabilators, look to the leftmost front panel where we found our taxi lights during startup. To the immediate left is the stabilator trim indicator. Each tick mark equals one unit of trim. For takeoff, we want somewhere between one and three units of nose down trim. I recommend just doing three units units since it'll help keep your nose from violently pitching up when we actually perform the takeoff roll. Consider it as sort of a dampening effect. Now, the second thing we need to check is our flaps and slats. The flaps and slats switch is located to the very right of the cockpit right up against the wall. It looks like a sideways raindrop. I recommend binding this to a three position switch, but if you can't then there's multiple ways to bind it or you can just click on the switch to actuate it. This switch consists of an up, middle, and down position. Up is for the in setting, which fully retracts both the flaps and slats. The middle is the out position, which will deploy just the slats during flight, and will deploy the flaps when the gear is deployed. 
The down position is the out and down setting, which will deploy both flaps and slats during flight regardless of the position of the gear. If the landing gear isn't down, then you'll be alerted to the flaps position by the wheel's light flashing on and off. The plane will also be shaking quite a lot if you're too fast with the flaps deployed. We'll just set this to the middle out position, since when we get into the air and retract our gear, the flaps will automatically retract. Be careful not to mess with the emergency flaps and slats control which is a large lever that the regular flaps and slats control switch is attached to. If you actuate the emergency lever, then the flaps and slats will be forced out and you will not be able to retract them again. Now for the actual takeoff roll. Apply full pressure to your brakes to hold yourself in place. Then throttle up to 85% RPM. Finally, we just let go of the brakes and throttle up to full afterburner. It's important to note that the rudder only becomes effective for steering above 70 knots. So, if you start to drift to the side of the runway, apply differential braking to perform gentle corrections, or use the nose wheel steering if there is excessive crosswind. Once we've achieved 80 knots of speed, Jester will let you know, and we will apply full aft stick. Simply hold the stick back until the nose starts to rotate up, then smoothly release pressure on the stick until you are holding the nose at 10 to 12 degrees of pitch, allow the Phantom to climb naturally, and once a positive rate of climb is achieved, raise the gear. The gear coming up will allow the flaps to automatically retract as I mentioned before, which will cause the Phantom to experience a pitch moment forcing the nose upwards as the drag and lift of the flaps no longer affects the flight dynamics. It'll be good to trim this out once you've stabilized the nose. Once stable, we can push the slats lever to the in position. This will cause another pitch moment, but it should be less aggressive than when the flaps were raised. And that's it, you've successfully taken off in the F4 Phantom. Now let's figure out how to get ourselves back down to Earth. On approach to the runway, we need to check a few things. First, we'll need to adjust the height of our seat because the F4 Phantom, not being designed primarily for ground attack, has poor downward visibility towards the front, and our view of the runway will be blocked on final. To do this, we must locate the seat adjustment switch located on the right side of the pilot seat. You probably won't be using this much outside of landing, but I recommend binding it to something so you don't have to look down in flight to adjust it. We'll adjust our seat up to see over the nose and just set this as desired. Full extension may be a bit too much and leave you disoriented, but we'll start with that just to get a feel for it. Now we need to calculate the weight of our stores and fuel. This is important for figuring out what speed we need to be on final. The formula we need to follow is, for every 1,000 pounds of weight above 33,000 pounds, we add two knots to a baseline of 142 knots. For reference, the empty weight of the F4E is 32,500. 501 pounds, and a full load of M61 cannon ammo is roughly 500 pounds, so unless you've spent your cannon ammo, we can just assume our base weight is already 33,000 pounds. In our example, we are carrying four AIM-7 Sparrows at 500 pounds each, four AIM-9 Sidewinders at 200 pounds each, and two external wing tanks at about 250 pounds total. That comes out to about 3,000 pounds of stores rounding to the nearest thousand, and if we add our fuel weight, which in this example is roughly 4,000 pounds, we get a total store weight of 7,000 pounds. Now we multiply 7 by 2 to get 14, and add that to 142 for a desired landing speed of 156 knots. Now for the actual landing procedure. The standard visual landing procedure is what's called the overhead brake. I'm sure most of you are familiar with that term, but for those that aren't, let's go over it here. First, we need to be lined up with the upwind of the runway. In this example, we are inbound for Inserlik Airfield on runway 05. To perform an overhead brake in the F4 Phantom, we want to be flying in at 1500 feet AGL and a minimum of 300 knots. For reference, 350 knots is the typical standard for this approach. Also, I recommend sending the radar altimeter to 1500 feet to help with maintaining that altitude. Once we've established our approach speed and altitude, we'll continue until we have reached about one third of the runway. From here, we will throttle down to 80% 
and perform a left or right hand brake turn. The direction will depend on the runway and the traffic pattern at that airfield. To perform the brake turn, we will roll the Phantom in the direction of the turn and hold it at 60 degrees. To know if you are at 60 degrees of bank, we'll look to the outside of the primary attitude director indicator. Here, we'll find hash marks indicating specific levels of bank. Starting at zero and extending to either side, we have 10, 20, 30, 60, and 90 degree markers. The upside down triangle on the ADI ball is our bank indicator, so we want to place that as best we can on the 60 degree mark. Now, we just need to pull as hard as necessary to maintain level. Ensure you pull back smoothly and adjust aft stick pressure as needed during the turn to maintain level flight. To note, the slower you get, the harder you will need to pull to maintain level. We will hold this turn until we achieve the reciprocal heading of the runway, which in this case is 230. Then we'll roll out on the reciprocal heading, having slowed down to at least 250 knots. If you are finding yourself to be too fast through the brake turn, apply air brakes as needed to slow down. When below 250 knots and on the downwind, we will deploy our gear. Dropping the gear will cause a nose down moment, which you should be able to easily correct and then adjust using trim. You should also set the slats and flaps lever to the out and down position. This will cause another nose down moment as the drag from the flaps causes the center of lift to shift slightly aft of the plane. Correct this with some aft stick and then trim it out. In the downwind, we want to be flying level at around 1500 feet AGL and a minimum of 180 knots. Apply throttle as necessary to maintain speed and altitude. I recommend trying to hold 200 knots since we'll need the extra speed when we perform the base turn. From here, we'll periodically check over our shoulder to see when the runway threshold has reached the leading edge of our wingtip. This equates to roughly 45 degrees, which places us right where we want to be to start our turn through the base leg onto final. To begin the turn, simply bank between 30 and 45 degrees, adjusting the bank as necessary for lineup. Apply aft stick pressure to keep the nose from dropping too harshly. You should have between 5 and 10 degrees of pitch during this turn. Maintain a minimum of 170 knots through the turn and a descent rate of about 1,000 to 1,500 feet per minute by adjusting the throttles. As you perform this turn, you'll start to hear the AOA tone beep at you, so try to maintain a low AOA or an AOA no higher than on speed. Roll out on final using rudder inputs as the slow speed will cause adverse yaw effects when we aileron roll. Once wings level, as a frame of reference, adjust your pitch such that the nose of the aircraft is on the touchdown lines. If you're on glide slope, this should be slightly over 10 degrees of pitch. Now, we'll need to cut our power to about 80% RPM to gently slow to our calculated approach speed, which in this example we found to be 156 knots. If you are too fast, the AOA indexer will have an upward facing arrow and you will be able to hear a low beeping tone that increases in speed as you approach on speed AOA. On speed AOA will give you a solid donut on the indexer as well as a solid tone. If you are too slow, then the indexer will show a downward facing arrow along with a higher pitched and more rapidly beeping tone. It's better to be slow slightly fast rather than too slow in the Phantom. Once on speed and on glide slope, gently trim the jet out to make it easier to apply corrections to your AOA with the stick. As you approach the runway, your descent rate should be between 700 and 1000 feet per minute. When making power corrections to adjust descent rate, keep in mind that the engines are angled slightly downwards, so increases in power will cause a nose down moment that you will need to correct with aft stick. Decreasing power will cause the nose to rise, so you will need to pitch down to not exceed on speed AOA. If on final you are too high on glide slope, reduce power and gently drop the nose until appropriate glide slope is achieved. Then apply power and pitch back up to maintain on speed. If you are too low, maintain on speed for level flight by increasing the power until you intercept the glide slope, then continue from there. Once you get to about 30 feet, the ground effect will start to apply and will again cause another nose down moment. Correct this using aft stick pressure to perform a slight flare. This will give you a high AOA indication, so apply a little bump of extra power before reducing to idle to slow the descent and grease the landing. Then, just let the Phantom touch down, ensuring that you do not aero brake the jet by allowing the nose gear to hit the ground. Then hit P on the keyboard to deploy the parachute, and apply full aft stick to aid with aerodynamic braking of the stabilators. This should be enough to slow you down, so do not
not apply brakes until you are below 50 knots. To steer, apply rudder controls until you have dropped below 70 knots, then switch to differential braking or gentle nose wheel steering. Apply wheel brakes to slow down and exit the runway at the earliest convenience. Lastly, since we can't drag this parachute around, simply look down to the left side of the seat to locate the now upright parachute handle. Click the button which will pull the handle slightly further back and detach the parachute. Then left click the handle two more times to place it back into the default position. Then just taxi on over to wherever you need to go. Congratulations, you should now be able to successfully taxi, take off, and perform a visual approach from the pilot's seat. Now trust me when I say this, you really just kind of have to eyeball a landing. Unless the airfield you're landing at has helpful precision instruments such as VASI or PAPI lights to assist with glide slope, just fly the approach within parameters and aim for the touchdown zone. The F-4 Phantom is one jet in DCS that really requires a lot of time, effort, and precision to nail some of the flight procedures and landings are no exception. So go out there, practice, get a hang of it, and have some fun. In the meantime, if you wish to see more of these tutorials, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know exactly when the next one comes out. Also, consider becoming a channel member if you wish to see videos early or just want to support the channel. In the next chapter, we will be taking a look at how to navigate in the F-4 Phantom. There will also be a supplemental video later where we'll learn how to perform an ILS landing. So until then, I want to thank you all all so very much for watching and have a nice day.